This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Warhammer 40k is the most popular miniatures game in existence, and for good reason. It's a compelling concept. People love it. And yet, it is also one of the most expensive and time-consuming hobbies in existence as well, making it very hard to get into for the average hobbyist. And yet, there is a better way, a cheaper, more accessible entry point into the Warhammer 40k hobby that is published by Games Workshop themselves, a game that uses the same miniatures as Warhammer 40k yet is much cheaper, much easier to get your friends into. And right now might be the very best time in history to start playing it. Welcome to the world of Warhammer 40k, Kill Team. Part 1. What is Kill Team? Kill Team is, quite simply, the smaller scale version of Warhammer 40k. Instead of fielding massive armies on an even more massive table, you're simply controlling six to 10 little guys. Playing on a much smaller board that is more likely to fit on a table you actually own, and only a few pieces of terrain are needed. It's sort of a microcosm for the big game, and it's a really fun game as well. The people who write the Kill Team rules clearly care a lot about this game. They've made an interesting tactical experience that I've really enjoyed playing. It's a fun, easy to learn rule set that you can either play in a more casual narrative way as I like to do with my friends or in a more tactical, really crunchy, keeping up with the meta kind of way if you're into that sort of thing. I know there's a lot of fans who play the game in that way. And if you enjoy the world of Warhammer 40k and some of those beautiful miniatures, you'll be glad to know that this game uses a lot of the same figures. I'm pretty sure every figure in Kill Team can be used in Warhammer 40k, not necessarily vice versa, but there is a lot of crossover. So even if you are eventually planning to build and paint that massive Necron army that you've always wanted, I would probably advise you to just paint a Necron Kill Team first as all of those models will still be usable in your larger army if you do choose to pursue that vocation. But in the meantime, you can spend a lot less money and actually get a bunch of games in while you're working on painting that larger army. You might also find, like I have found with certain factions, that after painting a small team for a kill team, you don't really feel like painting 20 to 50 to 100 of whatever faction you thought you wanted a whole army of. So it's a great testing ground for new potential armies. This way you can try out a few different factions, see what you actually enjoy painting before committing to larger army projects. Kill Team is also a great recruitment game. If you have friends who are interested in the Warhammer 40k universe, Maybe they own a few miniatures already. Like I said, many of those miniatures are supported and can be used in Kill Team. And if they don't already own some miniatures but are just fans of the setting, maybe they've always wanted to try it out. For Kill Team, all you gotta do is purchase one box of 10 miniatures and the rules for those are apparently going to all be free online for the new edition. Which brings us to our next point. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that now is probably the best time, maybe ever, to get into Warhammer 40k Kill Team. And that is because we are right on the cusp of a new edition, which seems like all or at least most of the existing factions will have their rules out for free online. And that's honestly huge for recruiting new players. The game is also finally switching from shapes for movement to just standard inches for movement. So all of you out there who refuse to play this game because of the shapes, um, you can just use inches now. There's no proprietary movement tools. There's no proprietary dice. All you need is a measuring tape and a handful of D6s and your free rules online. It's more accessible than it's ever been. Another side benefit of this new edition coming out is that all the stuff from the previous edition, all the perfectly good 
miniatures and rules and terrain is probably going to be going on sale soon. So watch out for that as well. As not only will all of those models and terrain be usable in the new edition, but if you wanted to, you could just ignore the new edition and play the edition that I've been playing for the past year. It's a perfectly fun game. If you're just playing with your friends, you don't even need to upgrade to the new edition. However, if you do feel like upgrading to the new edition, as I think I'm going to be, it seems like this new edition of the game is going to be a lot more accessible, a lot more welcoming to new players. It seems like they're going to be keeping the core rules a lot simpler, a lot more tight, and then putting all of the more complicated rules, all of the extra stuff into additional rules modules that you can add on when you feel like it, if, if you feel like it. Not only this, but the new game is apparently coming with a brand new co-op game mode as well. And you know me, I'm a sucker for co-op or solo game modes. And I think it will be an excellent way to do a tutorial for the game as well. It makes the game a little bit less competitive, a lot more accessible for some people like me. How to get started. As they say in the new Warhammer community article for the new edition, you are going to need the new core book, the new core token sheet, although I'm sure you could sub in tokens from other games you have, a kill team of your choice, as well as a quote unquote kill zone. What they mean when they say kill zone is actually a combination of two things. Number one, a set of terrain for your models to climb on top of and hide behind. And number two, a 22 inch by 30 inch game mat or piece of cardboard or even just a, a table and you, you mark the lines with masking tape if you want. The other things you are going to need to play, the sort of unsaid things are, number one, you're going to need a friend to play with, and that friend is going to need their own kill team as well. In addition to this, again, if you're an absolute beginner, you're going to need some tools to assemble your models and you're probably going to want some paints to paint your models as well. The basic tools for assembling your models, some clippers, a little scalpel, and some glue will probably cost you between 10 and 20 US dollars. And the paints could cost anywhere between $30 and $100, depending on what you decide to buy. If you're curious, I have covered the absolute basics of everything from assembly to priming to painting your models in a old series I made called Hobby Basics. Links down in the description if you are an absolute beginner and you want to check those out. And that is it. That is everything you need to play Kill Team. And there are a few ways to go about buying all of this stuff. If you already own some of this stuff, I would encourage you to use what you already own first before buying new stuff. But let's say you are an absolute beginner to the world of Warhammer 40k and you want a starter set recommendation. I'm going to give you a few different recommendations based on your budget and things you might already own. But before we do that, do you know who else has a variety of great different purchase options depending on your budget and needs? That's right, it's this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one website and hosting platform for all of your website needs, and it's extremely easy to use. Just pick from one of their sumptuously designed templates or build your own template with their extremely intuitive new step-by-step -step website building system, Squarespace Blueprints. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my Squarespace website to host a gallery of my painted miniatures, all of my painting reference documents, as well as an online store, which accepts a variety of flexible payment options, and it was super easy to set up because of Squarespace. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. But let's say you are an absolute beginner to the world of Warhammer 40k and you want a starter set recommendation. If you like the look of the new Vespid kill team or the new Tempestus Scions kill team, and you like the look of the terrain, I think the brand new big box Operation Hive Storm is probably going to be a really good value. 
But ideally, I think for maximum effectiveness, I would recommend you find a friend who also wants to play with you first and then split the cost of this box right down the middle for your most cost effective option. And if this new box is anything like the previous edition, it's probably going to cost you about $200 USD or $240 Canadian or with inflation and changing exchange rates, it's probably going to be closer to $240 USD or unfortunately $300 for us Canadians. This seems like a lot of money, but I really do feel that this box is a good value if you're going to use everything inside. And by that, I mean, especially this new terrain kit. As unlike a lot of the other terrain we get from Games Workshop, this stuff is nice and generic. There's very few details on this that lets you know it's from the Warhammer 40K universe. But honestly, I feel like these pieces of sci-fi terrain could be used in many, many different war games. It's pretty much always good to have a set of ruined city terrain, whether you are playing Kill Team, Warhammer 40K, or any number of other more indie sci-fi games, which once you have this set, you could easily get started on playing a lot of those free indie games as well as just Kill Team. With that said, $240 USD is still a pretty steep entry point for a lot of people, even if you split it with a friend. So it should be noted that this is probably not the only starter set we are going to get, as if this edition follows the pattern of previous editions, in a few months, once Hivestorm has sold out, they will probably break up the contents of this box into two slightly cheaper but slightly worse value boxes, one with the rules and the miniatures and the scatter terrain, and one with the big terrain set. So depending on what you already own or what you're willing to build from scratch, those are a few options for starting points for Kill Team. If you already own terrain or you're willing to build terrain from scratch, for example, you could always just wait for the more basic starter set, which is usually a bit cheaper, more like around $100. Or like I said at the beginning of the video, if you already have friends who play Kill Team, they've already got the terrain, they've already got the core rules, you could always just buy your own little boxed Kill Team for whatever they go for these days, 60 to $70. Oof, is that really how much they cost these days? And that's an option as well. Are there cheaper, more beginner-friendly games out there that you could play as your first game? Yes, absolutely. But in my opinion, you get two main advantages from Kill Team that you're not going to get from those other games. Number one, the brand. Whether you like Games Workshop or whether you don't like them as much, the one thing you have to admit is that if you are playing a Games Workshop game, especially a game set in the Warhammer 40k universe, it is much, much easier to find people to play with. If you're a veteran of this channel, you know that I love the smaller companies more. I love Corvus Belli, I love Atomic Mass games, and I especially love all the indie games out there. But the sad fact of the matter is, if I ask someone to play Kill Team with me, if I ask someone to get into Warhammer 40k with me, I am way, 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 way more likely to get a yes they are way more likely to already own Warhammer models. And unfortunately, they are just way more likely to want to play it because it is a recognizable brand. Sure, it is a bit unfortunate. I don't like it either. But if you want to get a game group going, sometimes you got to paint and play the most mainstream game out there, at least to begin with, before introducing your friends to more obscure games. Of course, if you do want to introduce your friends to some of these more obscure games, by all means, please play what you want to play. Please play what you're a fan of. But if you're going to do that, you're probably going to have to do more of the heavy lifting. You're probably going to have to paint multiple armies. You're probably going to have to paint all the terrain yourself before introducing your friends to a non Games Workshop game. And if you're at that point, you're probably not a beginner and this video is probably not for you. My real point here is if you want to get into the Warhammer ecosystem, you want to get into the Wargame ecosystem and you want to bring all your friends in with you, I think Kill Team 
might be the way to do that. Number two, a complete game in a box. The second huge advantage of Kill Team over a lot of other skirmish style games is that it is a complete game in a box. Unlike most skirmish games, once you've painted a kill team, there are no new unit expansions to buy on a monthly or even yearly basis. You just paint your team, you paint your terrain, and you're done. You can just play with those teams and those terrain forever. If you like the look of any new kill teams, if you like the look of any new terrain or any of the new rule supplements, of course you can buy those things. But when you paint a kill team, it's pretty much done forever. And I think that's very satisfying. This does of course come with some downsides as well. If you're into the list building aspect of some games, you're not gonna find that here. There's not a lot of options in most kill teams. It's pretty much like there's one loadout that you pick and that's your loadout for your team. But for me, honestly, I don't like list building. So I am happy to just have a finished team and I take the same basic loadout every time. Happy to do that. Lots of other games where I can build lists if I want to. And if you're still watching the video at this point and you're still not convinced to play kill team, uh, well, I don't know why you're still watching, but let's get into some of the secret side benefits that I really enjoy about Kill Team. Secret side benefit number one. If you are a collector like me, and you like collecting a diverse collection of little guys, Kill Team can be a really fun game to collect and paint miniatures for. Of course, painting uh, larger armies can be fun collecting, new units for it over months and years and slowly painting them all in the same matching color scheme. But if we're being honest, I kind of get a bit bored by army painting at this point. I would rather paint a whole bunch of different looking models than painting a whole bunch of the same looking ones. And one thing I really like about Kill Team is it's a great justification for buying a whole bunch of different models from different factions in the 40k universe and amassing a collection of different little guys. It is a great excuse, in my opinion, for painting just a few models from every faction. I mean, sure, you could do that anyway, even without Kill Team, but with Kill Team, you have a rules reason to do it. You have a game reason to do it. And as my collection of grimdark models grows, I'm finding that I now have a ton of models to pick from when playing indie games that are set in similar settings. Much like the generic terrain set I was talking about before, amassing a collection of different figures from the 40K universe can be a really cool way to start getting into indie games as well. And this concept goes both ways. If you already have a bunch of diverse different models which fit into a grimdark sci-fi setting, you can probably find a way to use those in Kill Team if your friends are cool with you using proxies instead of the official models. So yeah, I love that Kill Team has been an excuse for me to paint up a bunch of random Warhammer NPCs, a bunch of random freaks, if you will. Secret benefit number two, random freaks. The other secret benefit slash coolest thing about Warhammer Kill Team is that often the models they're releasing for it are some of the weirdest, most obscure characters from the corners of the 40k universe. So if you enjoy painting and collecting these more street level characters and models like cultists, um, random militia, uh, space navy, space cops, elf pirates, um, mercenaries, random guys from space. I think you're going to really enjoy Kill Team. And this is one of my favorite parts about the game in general is, is it's an excuse for Games Workshop to create and release models that they wouldn't be releasing otherwise. Traditionally, we get about eight new gangs per year, and usually one of those two is something obscure and one of them is something more mainstream. Sometimes the gangs that re they release are just 
upgrade sprues for existing models and that has its own cool side benefit as well. Check out my video on the Night Lords and why I like upgrade sprues, link down in the description for more on why I think the upgrade sprues are actually the coolest thing ever. I just love it. I love Kill Team so much. It's been a perfect little game to get into, really low commitment, and that's without even talking about the gameplay. We didn't really talk about the gameplay, did we? The game is really fun. I, I like a lot of the mechanics. Um, it's pretty easy to learn, but there is a lot of tactical depth to it, which I'm still trying to grasp my brain around. So what do you think? Have I convinced you to play Kill Team? Or do you already play Kill Team and love it so much like I do? Or do you dislike Kill Team? Let me know down in the comments. I'm genuinely curious. It's, it's been a game I've been really enjoying getting into. Before we go, I would like to, of course, thank all of our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com slash Dana Howell for your ongoing support. I really appreciate you. I couldn't make this channel without you. Uh, and with that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.